Okay, we are back with more other M. Let's uh, let's keep going. Let's see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Got into a bit of a kerfuffle about this in Discord. Let's reiterate that like the idea of Samus having a character or being flawed or any of those things again are not things that I have a problem with. Uh, I just don't think this game has earned the story it's trying to tell and that its way of telling the story is very poor. As we keep going, we'll keep thinking of ways to script doctor this. I don't think that the component Lego pieces of Other M are completely unsalvageable. I think the problem is the way they put them together. There's a way to tell the story that isn't as terrible. And they just chose to not say that. The more I think of this as, what if this was Samus's first adventure? What if this was a distant prequel and she was in the Federation force or whatever, and she gets her power armor and all of her squad mates die and Adam dies? Uh, and it's explaining how Samus was hardened or something. That would be great. I would love that. I just don't think you could start giving her this backstory six games in without giving us context. I don't like this. These sequences where you have to, like, pixel hunt. It'd be one thing if you had to turn the screen in the direction of the thing you're supposed to look at and the cutscene triggered. Get back. I want all the soldiers to evacuate this area. Samus, your orders are to take care of all enemy targets. Samus! Getting that crazy kickoff. The hot take that I have on this game, but I don't know whether this is novel, and I don't know whether it's going to hold up, but it's that this game is not a Metroidvania. It's a spectacle brawler without any spectacle and without any brawling. And it has more in common with games like Devil May Cry and Bayonetta than it has with Metroid. But it's possible that that's just how the first you know, two and a half hours play out, and as you get further, it's going to become more Metroidvania-like in its uh, layout and construction. It's difficult because I think that the the line is blurred there. Like, if you want to talk about what makes a game a Metroidvania, you can make a list of bullet points. But then there'll be a bunch of games that will technically match those bullet points. Like I think that a lot of Zelda games would overlap with your Metroidvania definition bullet points, right? And most people wouldn't call a Zelda game a Metroidvania. How much am I not enjoying it? It's fine. The gameplay is... it's a playable game. It's certainly more playable than something like Sonic 06. I'd say it's even more playable than Resident Evil 6. It's just the the story and the layout of the game are bad, and it has a bunch of baffling decisions. It just it tried to make too many changes at once. I don't think it really considered how those changes didn't work with one another. Shit, shit. Kind of like a, they wanted to have their cake and eat it too type situation. They wanted it to just be the one controller and no nunchuck, which is fine as an idea, but then they also wanted to have this swapping perspective thing, and it's like, you do one or the other. If you're going to do the first person, third person thing, I think you need to have a nunchuck for it to be playable. In this case, it's like so janky and frustrating to swap between perspectives. 
It sounds like that decision came from that was those word of God. That wasn't Team Ninja. I guess that they actually requested to have a nunchuck. Sakamoto said no. It's reminiscent of something like Zelda 2. Yeah, the walking simulator sections are... I don't understand what they were going for. Like... There's a couple more modern games, like Final Fantasy VII Remake, that will do these little walking simulator sections, and we'll do it to, like, load things without having a loading screen. It's fine. They usually try to do them to build tension, but there's never any tension here. It's just, okay, now walk back to the room you were just in, right? Hey, Ludifex, how you doing? The game has mercifully slowed down on the cutscenes after the first 30 minutes. I was really worried that the first 30 minutes were going to be representative of the entire game. That it was going to constantly be breaking up with these like shitty Team Ninja dialogue sequences. I wonder how much this game was informed by the Prime games, specifically by 3. Yeah, it's an interesting question, you know? it. You wonder, is like, is this them trying to make it more Western? We're in line with Prime? I think I mentioned in Discord that this game seems to do things because other games do them, but not really know why. I think that's the Lindsay Ellis quote that's like, you know, the filmmakers know that sometimes in movies, things are shot at a Dutch angle, the camera is tilted, but they don't know why that is. Oh my god, I... The Matrix peril suspension slow-mo stuff is so frustrating to me. Just think about all the times you encounter big things in the Metroid games. It just happened, right? There's not a transition cutscene. Right? Okay, wants me to shoot the tail? Yeah, so like this is very, this part right here is extremely Bayonetta-y, right? It's like an interactable cutscene. Yeah, why am I shooting it more than once? <laughs> this is already like six or seven shots more times than was interesting. I guess it's got a health bar up there. Oh, I'm out of missiles. Because you can run out of missiles in a cutscene like this. Incredible. I'm gonna die in this. That would be so dumb. It's gonna happen. I don't think I can refill my missiles during it either. No, I can't. Wait, can I even do damage to it without missiles? Maybe charge shot. And then Samus died. Okay. Hey, why would I cancel the playthrough? I like having an informed opinion on things. I kind of didn't like saying I probably would dislike other M despite not having played it.
goes on way longer than it needs to. It's like you get the idea as soon as you load in here. It's like this isn't a boss fight, right? You get to pick which side it's going to stop on, basically. Top 10 Metroid boss fights. Oh, and I don't even get to kill it at the end. Great. Cover early. But this thing takes forever to charge. I'll yeah. save the next shot. The free fall Ridley fight is interesting. That one's boring. Pick a side to shoot. What's up? Lyle's down. Oh, not Lyle. I was connected to his character. What's gotta happen to a guy to make him look like that? You get et by a Metroid. Are you serious? What do you guys want me to do here? Well, it would be great if I could just like leave. Samus, you gotta like walk in front of them to look. The fact that they make you pixel hunt in these sequences is also bad because like it makes you wonder why are they just standing there? Like what are they waiting for to happen? You have the little introduction cutscene with the rotating profile pictures. Now, when they made me do this pixel hunt crap before, they haven't let me have this much control of the camera. I haven't been able to turn it this much. Thank you. Glad they made it green. Samus looks so out of place in this game. An empty shell. Looks like that monster. From Just imagining all the cutscenes with her in it. Federation military gear, and then like making a late development decision, like shit, no, we can't do that. She's got to be Samus. She's got to be in the power suit the whole time. And then just like. Writing that into the existing cutscenes without really changing the lighting or the way she looks compared to everybody else. Because they all kind of have this, like, kind of washed out, you know, brown and bloom 2010s look to them, and she's this bright yellow and red monstrosity. So you think if she was meant to blend in with them from the beginning, that they would have, like, toned her down a little bit, made her look a little Twilight Princessy. Clear that the Galactic Federation was developing bioweapons on the bottle ship. I wonder if Adam came here knowing that. Regardless, I knew I had to talk to the person in charge, Madeline Bergman. Of course, she would have to be alive in order for me to do that. Let's go talk to the person in charge. That's how we solve things.
Samus. Start by searching she has to be alive for me to do that. We'll determine weapon and equipment authorization after we get a better understanding of the situation. Could have been worse. It wasn't necessary. If you if you cut it, nothing would be lost, right? That's like the golden rule of editing. Does the thing that you're considering removing is any value lost if you were to delete it? No? Then delete it. Our, uh, our standards have gotten very low for this. That was kind of neat. I like broken glass tubes. It's very Metroid. Please give resistance gear, Daddy. We actually haven't heard her talk about babies too much, fortunately. It was really bad at the beginning of the game. It felt like it was a localization error. I am taking lava damage. But this part is also very, uh... Bayonetta-y, right? Well... Wow, touching the lava feels amazing. Okay. Snake! Uh, it's up to you. Patreon, I get a slightly better cut, but Twitch offers you more uh, native features. You'll get access to emotes. You'll get a multiplier for your spheres. You get an SP multiplier and sub block either way, but I unfortunately can't grant the Twitch stuff to anybody. Oh, I love to play Jibiro, though. Well, oh, thanks for considering, Fly. That's very cool of you. It's one of those sequences in these sorts of games that, like, doesn't work if you have to do it more than once. It depends on simulated uh, peril. Uncharted has lots of these. Yeah, let's check it out. At the five dollar level, it's not that big of a deal, so I would I would say sub on Twitch so that you get more features, more perks for subbing. Thanks for asking. We're still in a spaceship, right? Stunlock cutscene there. I feel like these guys are probably pretty weak against the missiles, but I like badly do not want to swap to first person view because it feels helpful. Still stupid. I feel like that unlocking in a fight feels particularly bad versus going through an area where you need it and then finding the upgrade and then getting to use it elsewhere, right? Hmm. 
They just don't care about the ice beam. Oh, it weakens their guns for a sec. Okay, at least it does something. Oh, those are nests, okay. Am I not? I'm confused. Usually I have to missile those things. Okay. I was a load bearing group of enemies. I keep expecting to get like healing drops from enemies, and it's just not how the game works. I guess maybe the missiles will feel less bad if I'm able to freeze enemies to the ground and then, like, target them. That's another thing. I feel like a lot of the things in this game have too much health for a Metroid game. Especially the boss whose tail we kept shooting. Ship detects an outbreak of creatures in the sector. Yeah. It's just something I, I associate that with like I'm trying to think of not too many metric venues that I've played where you absolutely have to fight everything in a room, right? You can often choose to, and it, occasionally rooms will do it in like Super Metroid, but definitely not as common as this game does it. Part of the problem with the region health is that you can only turn that on when you're almost dead. Like, it would be an interesting choice if you could activate it whenever, right? But because the way the controls work, it has to be a context-sensitive command. There's not enough buttons or combination of, of gestures on the Wiimote. It only becomes available when you're almost dead, It's part of the problem. And often the distance between not being able to heal and being able to heal means that you're likely to take another hit immediately and just die. Yeah, I think whether or not the load-bearing enemies thing makes diegetic sense, I just don't think it fits the genre, basically. See, that was enough to kill that guy. I don't think I need to shoot him more times. Got the idea there. Really? Being in the lava feels so bad. It like slows you down a ton, which makes sense, but it's like it should just kill you when you touch it if they're going to do that. Okay, I think this is a long enough area. This is meant to be like, come here when you have the various suit.
back here once daddy lets me wear my costume. Got it. Okay, I'm supposed to go through there already. Can't do this yet. Uh, I don't need that kind of hint, Kami. Thanks, so. though. Discuss it and hide if you think I'm going way off track. Skip the fusion, there you go. Exclamation point chests. Really? I'm going slow in the lava, fine. I mean, it technically is a thing when you fall in the lava in the 2D games. But like, it like locks you in place for a second as you touch it. Can I still heal when I'm in fiery areas? Well, various suits pointless. Still kind of bad. What's happening? The grapple beam thing later, maybe? cardinal sin of having a long sequence that you can do but shouldn't it's kind of surprising though like previous metroid games you go into an area like that that has lava and you're taking constant damage it's kind of an indicator like oh come back here later Enemy is only vulnerable very briefly. Just like Resident Evil 6. Oh, you're guaranteed to take that damage when it spawns in. Maybe you can dodge it. If you ever see me about to die and I suddenly turn into a morph ball, it's because it's the same button as healing, but you have to have the uh, Wiimote pointed straight up for it to work. chance to make it vulnerable there. Maybe I'm supposed to be shooting it while it's apparently invulnerable. Missling it, maybe?
I think I'm supposed to go like beat it up after that happens next time. Nope. It's like two hits for it to become vulnerable. The traditional Metroidvania finishing move. Samus at which time? I know, right? That's kind of cool. It's like the Guardian 8. Okay. This is supposed to be an interactable console. I've had this problem before. It's got a little shiny thing there anyway. It looks like the other red interactable consoles. And maybe it's a scam thing. Oh my god, is it going to be a accessible secret? Nope, there is an invisible ceiling there. <laughs> just make 100% sure. No, when I'm aiming at it and I press the missile button, nothing happens. And my fight goes down as I get higher there. Right, so I'm here. Are you ready? One, two, B, A, D pad, left, right, left, minus, plus. Home button. Point at the screen. A. One, two, D pad. Minus plus home button. It doesn't do anything. Probably does something when we come back here later. Z is on the uh, nunchuck, which you don't use in this game. I'm guessing we backtrack through that room later and we need to use the console to like stop the volcano from erupting or something. Who the hell knows? Oh my gosh, is that a secret that I might be able to access later? Or something that's just gonna open after I kill these guys?
It's not gonna use missiles. I was like, I'm gonna try using missiles. Maybe it's that you're supposed to freeze all of your guns first and then you can safely missile them. But whether or not the ice beam actually freezes their hands seems to be somewhat random. So far, I still want to say that this game is a spectacle brawler. We're still not there. It's totally a thing there. Now this one is usable. And it's usable by walking up to it and pressing nothing. There's like a thing I can jump across down there somewhere. I'm gonna look one more time, hold on. Yeah, it's like straight across from here. But if I go straight forward, I fall. Just like wall jump my way back up there. I actually realize this is a wall jump level surface. Supposed to be on the other side of the glass here. I think there's just a path down here somewhere. I think this is progress, right? There's one on the other side. Oh, you can't jump in there because it doesn't connect. Okay. This is incredibly Bayonetta Devil May Cry E. And stuff like this has happened in Metroid games, right? Like, everyone has the time is running out, countdown escape sequence. It's all in the presentation. Seriously, shoot the thing. Oh my god. Wiimote, what are you doing? Oh my god. Alright, well, I'm gonna die. Even like the way it cuts you back to the start of the sequence. The sound of the music. Little slow-mo monster attacks. If you can dodge directly into the lava there.
Oh, I wasn't even supposed to shoot it. I just needed to grab at it at a slightly better angle to turn into a mothball. Are you fucking kidding me? So I was like, all right, he's, the various suit's not something I'm going to have to unlock, right? It's just going to be, I'm going to have to find it. She doesn't have it for some reason. That would be particularly stupid for it to be unlocked, especially after I've been in here for a while. Oh, okay, Adam. Yep. It doesn't feel like an unlock when it happens either. It doesn't feel like I went somewhere that I couldn't progress through and now I'm going to come back and check it out later, right? It feels like someone made a spectacle brawler that wanted to like feel like it was calling attention to those old unlocks back in the day. So I was already in the lava area, I was just taking constant dot damage. These boss fights are so dull, too. Thinking about rudiments of boss design, right? I feel like we fought a boss like this in Banjo Kazooie, in several games actually. That's annoying. I think it only actually takes damage when you missile the frozen chest plate. I think last episode I compared the uh, jump on it and press one once you're fully charged. I compared it to Kingdom Hearts press A to cutscene boss fights, right? Which are all over that game. Except usually the cutscene in this game isn't run up its arm and shoot it in the head like that. That was much more Bayonetta y. Kingdom Heartsy. It's press A to shoot a missile, which is a pretty like mundane, boring thing to do in a normal Metroid game. Can you activate the waggle control missile fast enough? Yeah. Exactly. He doesn't have a weak point anymore. Is it all gonna be run up his arm? This mechanic here of running up his arm and then shooting him in the head in this little cutscene is very spectacle brawlery. QTE fights. As much as I thought the 3D to 2D transition was a cool concept when we first started playing, I think it basically has all the weaknesses of 2D and none of the strengths, and all the weaknesses of FPS games and none of the strengths. Because when you're in first person, you can't move, right? So they had to make it really simple where everything is just a lock-on. Lock on the missile, you don't have to aim. At that point, why do they even make you go first person if it's just going to lock on, right? Just have me hold a modifier button in order to fire a missile. A trade to an alternate way to kill the Metric Queen is to roll into a ball that her swallow you in Bomber's stomach. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Again, talking about how this game isn't necessarily... Like, the, the constituent parts of the game aren't necessarily a problem. It's the way they're put together and the way they're executed more than anything else. The idea that... You're going to unlock the various suit partway through the lava level. Or even the idea that you have to be granted per permission to use the various suit at some point isn't on its own terrible. It's that you've already been here for 20 minutes taking heat damage constantly. And then in the middle of a boss fight, unceremoniously, Daddy's like, Okay, you can put it on now. Like, why now? Why not 
20 minutes ago when I first got in here. Also, of all the things to restrict, the only thing that makes any kind of logical sense is the power bomb. Maybe the missiles. Like, why would you restrict my ability to not burn to death, right? Right. Again, it would be completely fine. I'm going to keep reframing it in what if this was a super far back prequel. It's like Tomb Raider 2013 and she's a completely green nuke. Then it is a lot less stupid. I think if you're already going to be fucking around with the universe, the better thing to retcon is that Samus was raised by the Chozo. You can make this the adventure where she gets her power suit, where she first encounters the Chozo. She was an unthinking robot. Yeah, there you go. If she wasn't a human being. Like a remote controlled drone or something. Samus, continue your investigation of that sector. I think this is why you see soft reboots so often. People aren't willing to, like, do a sequel to a story seven episodes in and then, like, suddenly change away someone's characterized. I think one of the debates in Discord was, like, well, before she had no character, and isn't some character better than no character? And my answer is pretty resoundingly no. <laughs> like, I'm not saying no character is good. I don't mind the silent JRPG protagonist, right? It's a very common trope in video games, especially Western video games, actually. I don't think it's necessarily bad, but if this is what I'm going to get, I would rather just be a silent character. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. No character is neither good or bad. It's a neutral point from which you can depart in either direction, right? Like, Link has no character. So who cares? These games aren't really about that anyway. I don't think so. I've always kind of felt of Metroid as sort of a self-insert. It's lonely, and the fact that she never says anything is part of what makes it lonely. You're not even getting commentary from the character. You kind of have to imagine, like how she's processing it. But if you wanted to say, you know what, let's do a Zelda game where Link talks and uh, let's let's make a Link that has a bunch of character. I, mean, I guess you kind of get that in Wind Waker where he emotes a lot and you can really tell what Link is thinking. Again, just do a soft reboot. Don't, don't try to fit it into the canon to the extent that Metroid canon even matters. I think that's also part of the problem is it suggests that the Metroid canon matters, right? By having the opening CG cutscene with the uh, mother brain and the baby saving you. Those other games, they were important. It's like, were they though? Do I need to shoot something in this room? Really? I mean, I know that's what you want me to do with it. Sector 2. There's a high probability of survivors. 
whoever's hiding there. Yeah, so like, what is her character? Yeah, She's obedient to Adam? I'm not really clear what her motivations are. Like, why is she here? Why is she investigating stuff? She's not getting paid. She's not, like, getting a bounty. It kind of cut directly into that weird Federation training sequence. Which, again, would fit better if this was a prequel and she was a green rookie and it was like, All right, Samus, you gotta learn how to do your shit. Here's how you fire your gun. Blah, 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 blah. Captain N. These are the days. See... Uh, big boss and the boss work because that's like we're basically following a new character and I think that Snake Eater tries a lot harder to earn the relationship between the boss like it spends the whole beginning of the game setting that up you get Kodak calls you get cutscenes between the two of them just the two of them Like, this game wants me to believe that Samus and Adam have a relationship like Big Boss and the Boss. But it wants me to just, like, accept that that's already the case without actually showing it to me. It wants to tell me they have this relationship. Roll with it. It's like, can you, like, show me that that's a thing? Because, again, the, the idea isn't bad. She has this mentor relationship with this guy, and she seeks his approval. I actually don't think that that on its own is is sinful or bad or against what Metroid stands for. It's not a terrible idea. It's just, it's unearned. And I think that that would be the main word I would use to describe Other M so far is that everything it's trying to do, it's trying to like fast forward to it. It's not trying to earn it. It's a cheesy action movie that wants you to pretend like it spent time developing a character when it didn't, you know? Mentors are valuable, they can get you killed off. This elevator is bound for the main sector. Well, they're wasting their precious cutscene time on introducing Lyle with the spinning profile picture, right? Like, they could use that to develop her relationship with Adam better. Or on pointless monologues that if deleted, would you would lose nothing. But yeah, Leon, that's that's what I would do. Script Doctor, this is Samus's first mission. She goes in here as a green rookie. She doesn't have the power suit. She has a regular gun. The other people here with you get picked off one by one until finally your mentor dies and she has to finish the game by herself. And Adam is like your Gandalf character, where as long as he's around, things are safe. Just to unlock the various suit. Ryle, just two letters off from being an anagram for Ridley. Code cracked. Other M second gig. Other M Brotherhood. I I mean, I don't know anything about the development of this game. I haven't watched any videos of it, but the more I I replace things with her being a green rookie the more it makes me wonder if that's actually what they wanted to do and they, like, bailed. They decided not to do that at the last second. There's a lot of stuff that the game would make more sense if that was the case. The fact that she's even here with the Federation on this Federation mission and they have these weird lines of dialogue about, like, oh, even though she's not with them, she's decided to follow their orders anyway. Like, wouldn't that make more sense if she was just, like, literally with them and was part of the Federation? You wouldn't have to have that weird jank then. Just be like, oh yeah, she's a soldier, got it. That doesn't confuse me.
I guess we'll see. Someone in Discord spoiled one of the things that happens later in this game. So maybe in order for them to tell their story, it has to take place after Super Metroid. Or maybe that was an idea that they had. And they're like, oh man, we want Samus to have this damage. So it can't be a prequel anymore. Let's see if we can shoehorn it into being a Super Metroid sequel. And it's like, yeah, but doesn't that not make sense with the whole Adam is uh, authorizing you to do stuff? It's like, whatever, we'll make it work. Maybe she just really likes him and is doing what he says because she respects it. No, yeah, the the monst the, the look of the alien animals are cool. I will say that. The actual fights are really dull. It's like they're all a little bit too long. Most enemies in Metroid games, you you kind of kill them in a couple hits. It's more about not taking damage from them than it is about killing them, if that makes sense. They just wanted to CGI-ify the ending of Super Metroid, yeah. I'm trying to really put together why the combat in this game feels boring to me. I don't think it's a poisoned well thing. I don't think it's because I went in, disliked some things early on, and now I'm like trying to see each encounter in the most negative possible light. It, it feels different from any other Metroid game where it's like, I'll get into a room, it locks the doors, and it's like, okay, kill this thing. And it's like, oh my God. Like the fun part of Metroid isn't fighting stuff. Stuff is like an interesting obstacle to the next thing that you get to explore. Like, I want to get to the next room. And I can fight it because maybe it drops some missiles that I need or some health that I need. Or, or maybe it's just in my way and there's not an easy way for me to dodge it. Maybe it's more efficient for me to shoot it. But in this game, it's like, oh my god, let me get this over with. I want to get to the next room and see what the next puzzle is going to be. Yeah, I'd agree about the boss fights in the Metroid Prime games. I feel like they're really well done in the 2D Metroid games, especially because when you get good at them, you can end them very quickly. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good for the most part. I would agree. I don't think it's a bad looking game. Can I wall jump underwater? I think so. Oh, wait. Remember, in order to grab these, I have to press the jump button again in the air. This feels so terrible. It feels so, like, floaty. Goodness, room, I didn't have to kill everything. Yeah, I got the general look of Metroid, right? I'd agree. Other than Samus sticking out like a sore thumb whenever she's around the Federation folks. That's more of a problem of them not fitting into the aesthetic. I think there's a way to make her look different from them without making her look like she's been photoshopped in. That's the best way I can describe it. Like, she looks literally out of place. Like, they didn't intentionally... Or they didn't originally intend her to look like this around all the other characters. Spectacle Brawler without the spectacle. Or the brawling. So let's make a God of War, like original God of War game, 
or a Bayonetta game set in the Metroid universe where you play as Samus. But we'll pretend like it's still a Metroidvania because the upgrades will still be there. But it's not any different from like, you know, beating a boss in Devil May Cry 1 and getting the, the Ifrit grenade launcher or fists or whatever. Like, okay, I have this now. I'm gonna keep going along the set path that's set in front of me. Yo, I agree, Stargamer. I think if this wasn't called Metroid Other M, if this was crazy space animal adventure on a hologram spaceship, Like, if you told me that this was originally called Dinosaur Planet or Doki Doki Panic, and then at some point they tried to salvage it in development and repurpose it as a Metroid game and added some things like the Morph Ball. I know that's not actually the case. Do you have to knock its helmet off first or something? God. When it decides it doesn't want to lock on anymore, it just like your aim just starts shifting. I didn't beat Star Fox Adventure, I rented it. I thought it was fine. But again, it's just it's it wasn't originally a Star Fox game. It was a cool looking game called Dinosaur Planet. And they're like, you know what, we could make more money with this if we box it as a Star Fox game. Oh my god, is this a secret? Or is this mandatory progress? So there's too much going on here for this to be a secret. puzzles had to be dumbed down because they gave a dino friend and magic staff to the same character. get to that energy tank yet, right? Oops. You always get the map, right? It's always on the critical path. Because the whole game is a critical path so far. We haven't had one branching path in three hours and 44 minutes. A couple times there's been a side room. There's been a single room that has an item in it. So there's occasionally a secret that's still consistent with the Spectacle Brawler, right? Requires a super missile. Hey, Adam, can I use my super missile, please? Please? Is 
some of the decisions in this game, it's almost like they sat down and they were like, how can we do this on purpose in the worst possible way, right? So we have this idea about Samus's unlocks being things that uh, she has to get permission to use. How do we deploy that idea in the worst possible way? Right. It's like she's silent when she shouldn't be, and then when she ought to be silent, she starts talking and doesn't add anything useful. There's literally nothing else in this room that I can do, right? I guess there's another door from the saver, maybe. She's too prideful, then she should just fucking use her abilities, right? <laughs> like, she's not, not using them because she's trying to show off. She's not using them because she used one at the beginning of the mission and it made Adam sad or something. Does anyone have a sense of where I'm supposed to go here? Like, the objective marker tells me to go down here but it's a dead end, and it says I need the super missile. There's a secret in the hallway. It's more of the problem I was talking about earlier about the game asking you to go for really long stretches where it's just like telling you what to do and then suddenly being like, oh wait, no, this is a Metroid game. Uh, figure out what you're supposed to do in this room. There's like a secret exit. It's more clever than you think it is. But it's not that clever. You're not actually going to have to backtrack and find something special. Yeah, exactly this name. The AC is busted. <laughs> Go. So far. I feel like if you had a nunchuck in this game and you could move while in first person view, that might be kind of nice. There might be times I want to do one or the other, right?
This is one of those maps where it's like, don't don't look at the actual environment you're in. Look at the map. There's a bunch of areas that you can see, but you're not supposed to jump on. This is a feeling I get in, like, the original God of War. Not 2018, which is a little bit better about it, but, you know, like, a Minotaur will spawn, and it's like, oh, I've fought Minotaurs before. It's like the everything is a mini-boss approach to level design. Let me just spend two or three minutes nuking this guy down here. It's weird because lots of games have repeat enemies and even repeat mini-bosses, right? So why does this feel like Bayonetta? Is it because they just take so fucking long to kill for no reason? And it's not like, oh, now you're fighting it, but there's a lava pit, and it could knock you into the lava pit. Or now you're fighting it, but... There's a bunch of wasps flying at you. Like, nope, this is exactly the same fight as the last time we fought this particular enemy. Nothing has materially changed. Specific kind of lack of respect for the player's time. It's like, shit, we've got a room here, we gotta give you something to do. It can't just be an empty room. I feel like it's actually somewhat common in Metroidvanias for there to be just atmospheric rooms that don't have enemies in them, right? Maybe they have a secret in them, but no combat. But there are virtually no rooms without enemies in this. It's like, the combat is the least interesting part about Metroidvanias. Or Metroid in particular. Oh my god. It's like, that problem where the Wiimote is spinning like that is even more likely to happen. Okay, the giant ice wall is a normal missile, but a small snow... whatever. A small snowdrift blocking a door. Needs super missiles. Yeah, Bayonet is... That's where I say it's a spectacle brawler without the spectacle or the brawling. Like, part of a spectacle brawler is the style component that anybody can, like, kind of limp their way through the game and just beat it by button mashing, but then you're going to get bad rankings in each fight. And the way you get more value out of the game is by playing it well and, like, playing it stylishly. But you can't really play this game stylishly. There's nothing really special you can do. <sighs> Another invisible wall. Why do they even have the morph bomb jumping in the first place? It doesn't do anything. I'm confused. Okay. This looks like a similar room we've already been in before, with ice textures on it. Right, like, imagine this is the original God of War and just replace these guys with, like, there's, like, two harpies in this room. Alright, well, at least it'll feel good because I'll do this, like, really visceral thing of ripping their wings off and, like, dash around and get a bunch of XP for killing them. I think somebody mentioned this in the last episode that, like, part of what makes games like Devil May Cry work is that you're getting experience points drops for killing the enemies. And those are giving you new abilities and unlocks that make future combat more fun. So even though you're doing this repetitive task of you're fighting the, the harpies a million times or the puppet enemies and Devil May Cry a million times, it's fine because you're getting something for doing it, and if you do it well, you're getting more experience. Here, they don't drop pickups, they don't drop health. They're just here to waste my time until the door unlocks, right? 
And if this were a normal Metroid game, I would just run to the door and just leave without fighting them. For repeat encounters to work, you have to have a robust toolbox and a reason to change which tool you use. Sure, yeah, it's like, oh, this room, bombs aren't the best tool for this boss. I should use this instead. That's more interesting. Yeah, that's fair. Like, if you're gaining XP and you're fighting the exact same group of three harpies in a very similar environment, it might feel less terrible simply because now you've got a new spell in your toolkit or something. You've got a new combo you can use so you can fight them a little bit differently. Here it's just, okay, it's this guy again. Oh, he dies when he touches the water. That's... So at least here he's a, a hassle while I solve the puzzle in the room is what he's doing. But I am actually not allowed to fight him until I solve the puzzle, so... I think I touched on this lightly last episode, but the soundtrack in this game makes me really sad. It's like, it's nothing. It's like an ultra generic Hollywood score. Where I feel like Metroid is one of those rare video game franchises that has a very clear audio identity. For like, I don't know what the next Metroid game is gonna sound like, but I have a decent idea of what would sound Metroid-y, you know? Very generic Hollywood trailer music. Imagine if Indrana drifts kind of track in this room. There's no enemies in this room. It just kind of chill, and you have to figure out that you're supposed to shoot down the icicles. You've got time to figure that out. You're not getting blasted by that dude on the other side of the room. Let's say, is this actually going to work? Probably not when I'm underwater. Adam, I want to use my gravity suit. And I'm running into this problem where I can't just like smoothly jump off the ledge because there's like an invisible wall there that I have to kind of overcome slightly when I jump. So if like, I want to jump and then fall into the thing, I can't do that. Yeah, no consequences in battle and puzzle choices. So I think we were trying to figure out like, you know, coming to Other M, I expect the story to be bad because that's what I've heard, but I'm expecting the gameplay to be stellar and it's not stellar. And we've used the word fine before, like the gameplay is fine, but I don't even think that gets the concept across. Okay, I can't get this early. I have to come back with a gravity suit, whatever. Um, the gameplay in this makes me feel nothing. Like it's not, it's not the kind of hilariously, oh my God, bad that you get in something like Sonic 06 or Resident Evil 6, where you're like, are they really doing this? It's just, I don't care. <laughs> I just want it to be over. I just want to get to the next room, right? And that's almost more offensive to me. It's like watching a fun bad movie versus watching just like a blah bad movie. There's there's nothing to talk about here. If there's anything in this game, future Metroid games should take inspiration from. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of want to go back and play the 3DS one, Samus Returns again. Because I did not play that in the context of Other M. And when I played it, I was like, yeah, this, this is good. It's like a pretty solid Metroid game. It still had some of these QTEs in combat that I'm not the biggest fan of. It's this like illusory depth. Hey, we've got spider pizzicato strings again. The 
creature's corpse showed signs of what looked like Metroid predation, making my mind race. Metroids? Here? Impossible. Every other Metroid Metroids game cold temperatures. would accomplish that by showing us. Besides, they're extinct. The baby was the last of its kind. There's another one. Just delete. Just have her look at it. No voiceover. No subtitles. We've literally had games now where you'll walk in and you'll see something has had a Metroid. I think they, don't they do that in Super Metroid? Maybe. And it's one of the 2D Metroids where like a space pirate has signs of a Metroid having drained its brain. You know what, we were really doing that show don't tell thing really well. Let's not do that anymore. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start telling everything all the time. It'll be great, trust us. Remember that thing that was a huge strength of Metroid compared to other games? Glitch with the music with the track will finish and not start up again until you use on transition. We were like one of the first games to truly excel at show until narrative. That's something that people value now. I'm confused because the mini map is facing the opposite way from the actual map. Wait, oh, this is the way I just came. What the fuck do they. Dude, whatever. letting the uncharacteristic for Metroid objective marker send me the wrong way. I should just ignore it. And there might be a secret in this room because there's little morph ball tunnels on the walls, maybe? No, those are just lights this time. Okay. guys. It's this guy again. At least the room is a little bit different now, and I've got other things to deal with fighting him. On a completely degenerate encounter. Just killing him, turn off the fans. No, the fans don't actually do anything. Oh, well, the fans have to be frozen in order to get at the bug nest or something? Oh my god. The chance of that happening when you transition into first person view, unless if you were already exactly facing the direction you wanted to face, there's very, very high that that's going to happen. I'm not clear what causes you to get set to zero health and get another chance to regen. Trying to kill the thing in the back. Can't kill the thing in the back because when you transition to first person view, the camera wigged out.
I wonder if they originally developed it with the, uh... Oh my god. No, that... Why would you turn all the way around? Again. I wonder if they originally developed it with the, uh, nunchuck. And then they changed their mind. It's not even worth destroying that thing before I kill this guy. Because the missile really wants to target it. Targeting on? What are you doing? Target the boss! Oh my god. Remember, you can't aim. And you can't switch lock on targets. Once it locks on to something, it's just locked on. There's a little path in there, right? Okay. That was potentially something neat, but I don't know if there's actually anything in there. Is one of those rare opportunities where I have to think again. Why even have those if there's nothing in either of them? Exactly. What? Why did that happen? Oh, we have to clear out all the ice first. Power bomb. And it's like, you have to kill the enemies in here. It would be one thing if you, like, you had to fight the enemies from this. But there's basically no reason to do this until the enemies are dead. He'll never approve the power bomb. Riveting. <laughs> I thought I pressed jump slightly too early. <laughs> I wonder if you also have to kill the enemies, or if you can actually avoid the enemies in that room. I guess, as far as the Spectacle Brawler stuff goes, like, it could be worse. Devil May Cry 2 has the problem where you have all these rooms that have load-bearing enemies, 
but you have no way of knowing whether you're supposed to kill all the enemies or not. At least this game is generally pretty clear. Like, the enemies are just there when you load in, they don't just start spawning, so you don't know whether they're... No, I guess that's not true, because the, uh, the space pirates will respawn or spawn in while you're fighting them. Missing the cutscenes. Yeah, they were more interesting, right? Something was happening. It was bad and funny to laugh at. I feel like the cutscenes we have seen are made worse by the fact that they realized that they were bad and then stopped. <laughs> Maybe that's not fair. There's a giant obvious crack on this icicle. What do you want me to do, game? I wasn't facing it at the right angle the first time I tried to missile it. I don't know. There you go, Leon. That felt good. Power bomb thingy, right? We saw one of those earlier. Could have sworn we saw one of those earlier and it was a power bomb, but okay. Maybe it's rusty because it's underwater. It's kind of a neat idea if you shoot a bomb at something and then you, or you shoot a missile at something and then you climb into it as a ball and drop a bomb. It's kind of cool. Oh, this room's gonna get recontextualized and be full of water now? That's kind of neat. I'm gonna get the gravity suit soon then. Sam, as I noticed, you've been dicking around in here for 40 minutes. Now you can use the gravity suit. I wonder if it would feel worse. Like, it would be more naked that this isn't a Metroidvania if it wasn't doing the whole Adam's giving you permission thing, you know? Like, you would have to always find the upgrade exactly when you needed it. And never after you've had reason to investigate an area and come back to it later. Like, what if instead of 
Adam saying, hey, you can use the various suit now. You started the boss fight, and the various suit was just a power-up sitting in the ground in the middle of the fight, right? Is that somehow worse? Fuck. Thanks for bringing up Shadow Complex. I forgot games could be good. I like Shadow Complex. Be good to play that one again. It's been long enough since I played it now that it would be effectively blind. I liked it because it was short. It was good and short. Don't make a long Metroidvania unless if you're Hollow Knight, then you can do it over here. You're locked on, but not really, if I jump too much. Oh yeah, Lamalana works. Lamalana is almost its own thing. I think Lamalana is to Metroidvanias as RuneScape is to MMOs. Like, that should be its own genre, it's just no one else has made a game in that genre yet. I'm like one hit away from being able to heal. Like if I had three fewer health, I could heal now. Instead, it's going to get me to within one hit of dying, and then I can heal. Imagine if you could only met if you could only use Estus flasks in uh, Dark Souls when you were one hit away from death. I think that's fun of the risk, part of the fun of the risk reward calculus is oh I can heal early, but if I mistime it, then I risk taking more damage than if I hadn't healed at all. But here it's like oh if I get hit I'm just gonna die, right? Speed booster. Okay. You gonna... Hey, Adam. Can I use a speed booster, please? The most efficient Fucking way kidding me. Should be delivering shoulder impacts with your speed booster, so I'm authorizing its use. It's worse that it lets you walk up to the thing and then have to leave and be like, Oh no, you can use it now. Press and hold 2 while speed boosting. Is the Shine Spark context sensitive only? Oh shit, yeah, use your speed booster. You need it in this room. It's the first room that you've encountered it. Okay, I'm supposed to just run up there. Yeah, I could do this, but Adam hasn't said so. Sulks away. Imagine if you were a green rookie and he was teaching you how to do your stuff. Again, the idea itself isn't necessarily bad, even though 
often the way it's deployed in this game is very bad. I was damaging this thing before, I couldn't tell. a long open adventure Kirby game where you find enemy abilities to copy. Can I not speed boost in that direction because it's not a scripted context sensitive location for it? I think I walked over a tiny little bit of terrain that canceled the booster. Looks like that's not how I'm supposed to get to that, right? It looks like there's a ball path. Okay. Think about like Devil May Cry 1. Like you get an ability to swim underwater and you unlock that ability the first time you find water, right? You don't get a little person that like calls you on your cell phone to tell you, hey, did you know you can swim? Behind a pillar that disappears. Oh my god, enemies I don't have to kill. What game is this? Yeah, I don't know if you were here earlier uh, when we were talking about this six-gun, but I was saying it would be completely fine if Samus was a member of the Federation military. Like, if this was her first mission, and uh, that Adam was her commanding officer, and this is her first time learning to use her power suit, totally fine with it. I think it's actually kind of a cool concept. It's because this is her, what do we decide? This is her fifth mission, sixth, seventh? Metroid, Metroid 2, all three Prime games, Super Metroids, this is number seven.
Yeah, very suit's not a weapon. Hey, Samus, I noticed that you're melting to death and have been melting to death for the last 20 minutes. You can use your various suit now. You know, to not melt anymore. It's worth watching the VOD at some point, but just to summarize, I suspect that at some point in this game's development, this was supposed to be a far prequel or a soft reboot similar to Tomb Raider 2013, and that we were supposed to be playing as Samus when she was a green rookie as a member of the Federation. And a lot of the stuff in this game that's bizarre and makes no sense makes way more sense if it's in that context. But at some point during development, they changed their mind. They were like, no, let's make it after Super Metroid. We'll just say that Samus really likes this guy that used to be her commander and still wants to follow his orders regardless. Uh, if that's not the case, I think it still is true that the game would make more sense as a soft reboot. How Samus got her groove. Doesn't fit as the seventh chronological installment. I mean, a speed jump across this room game, so this is. Okay. Hey, it's this guy. The problem isn't that the ideas are bad or couldn't work, and I don't even think that it's that that makes sense in some settings, but it doesn't work in Metroid. It could work in Metroid, it's just that it's a concept that they have to earn. They can't just like tell the player, this is how it is now. I think in Discord I made the comparison of like it would be like if the Alien movies, instead of Ripley having any character in Alien and Aliens, she was just like a silent android. And then they tried to establish all this stuff about her having PTSD in like the seventh installment of the franchise. It's like, you could do that, but you have to earn it. You can't just like say, oh, by the way, this has all been happening off camera for the last six movies. If that's the angle you want to take, you're, you're going to have to spend some time on it, or you're going to have to basically start over. I keep calling back to Tomb Raider 2013, but it's a great way to do a story like that. Take a character who's beloved for being a badass, Basically has no character. Lara Croft, the Tomb Raider games, talked, but she really didn't have anything to say ever. She was a pretty generic video game protagonist. Give her character introduced vulnerability. Give her an arc. But, like, Lara in that game has clear motivations and goals. Samus is just kind of here. Like, they, they kept that part of Metroid that she's just kind of here.
it seemed like they were trying to go for something about her maternal instincts with the baby, which, again, earn it more, please, but fine. There's a way to do that that's not bad. But then it's basically been abandoned for the last four hours, right? Like, if that's the theme you want to go for, then I feel like you need to do a Silent Hill 2 thing, and, like, this whole facility has to be all about... being a mother. You have to be fighting... things that remind her of the Metroid baby, and... being a protector, and doing these themes they were trying to hint at, at the in the opening cutscene that they've thrown away for now. It's not so much that it's ludonarrative dissonance. It's not like the thing that's happening in the video game is contradicting the thing that they're suggesting is happening in the story. It's just that they're not connected at all. There's no resonance. Kind of like in uh, Dragon Quest VII where like occasionally they would just reach into the Akira Toriyama JPEG file. Like, all right, that's enough story. Now it's time for you to do JRPG battle. Uh, why don't you fight the fat guy that has a katana? Whatever, that's fine. <laughs> or um, what's another game that does that? Persona. Uh, whatever. This is the spooky hell tower. You got to fight a table or something. Who cares? Doesn't matter. There you go. Yeah, I do a God of War 2018 or a Last of Us thing. I mean, those games all came out after this one, but they could have had her escorting like a, a Newt's type character. You know, she's inspired by Ripley. That would even be cool. Ripley's a, a deeply flawed character. Maurice. Absolutely. Um, Not Maurice. I cared about him. What a great way to kill him off, too. What is this, a Resident Evil game? The fuck? More ice. <laughs> That's good. You guys did nothing to make me care. Charge faster. But we can't really give you that many upgrades because Numbnuts is gonna approve most of them. I think the snowbank exists to stop me from speed boosting. What if they just talked once or twice? There you go. I feel like that has to be Team Ninja, though. The the stupid little cutscenes with the introductions and the names and the rotating profile heads. It's hard for me to believe that they get a complete pass on this. That seems like exactly their level of, of dumb. <laughs> Hey, walking sim section. You're lying! 
I know the Galactic Federation wants to silence everyone who knows about our work here. I don't work for the Federation in this iteration. Why does she How assume I'm here from the Federation? Are willing to kill each other. Maybe because in the original game I came in here in their armor? Stay away from me. Listen to me. We're here to rescue you. I still think that the script and the voice acting are uncharacteristically bad for 2010. Hurry, this way. It's not quite like Resident Evil 1 bad, but it's in those early Resident Evil games. Maybe the original here. Nemesis. Hey, it's the construction thing from Alien. <laughs> With the muffled helmet voice doesn't work. This thing takes damage, really? This is a really stupid boss already. Work with Prime. I think with the guy riding in it, this is meant to be reminiscent of aliens. This isn't the whole fight, right? There's some trick that makes me do a shitload more damage to it or something. Okay, thank god. Right, because these fights aren't actual, hey, damage it a certain number of times while avoiding its mechanics. It's unlock the next QTE, press A to do thing. Millions is a good movie. So I think there are some of these cutscenes that you're technically able to dodge during them. It does the thing where it telegraphs to you, hey, this is a cutscene, but it doesn't have a little input on the screen that tells you, hey, there's a way to avoid damage during this. Namely, mash the D-pad. Okay. You saw me turn into a uh, morph ball there while I was trying to heal. Almost happened again. Nice. It looks like I'm supposed to be able to fit under it, but... Is that not where you're going with it? Okay. God. I slightly brush the blades and I get go flying halfway across the screen there. Shit, the more damage is so alarmingly little. Now, all the damage I'm doing outside of the QTE cutscenes isn't real damage, right? It's just stuff that's triggering my ability to actually hurt it. But. I think the last boss fight was much worse. The one that was all in first person at the start of the episode. You had to keep shooting its tail.
I love how it's mostly attacking me by backing up into me instead of using its... front blades. Which of the nameless named Federation guys was piloting that thing? What a fight. We've got this, Marstead. Where? Pow. Where? First the try. The believe that the Galactic Federation was sent to the bottle shop to keep those in the know from leaking information about the project. That's what she just said. You don't need to do this anime flashback to a thing that just happened. By someone wearing a Galactic Federation power suit, and she implied that Maurice was killed by another soldier. Yes, that happened. Considering the mortal danger we four minutes ago, together, I had to agree with her. What? There was a traitor among us. Samus. The wavelength of that monster's cry You could have clearly slipped at him that whole fight. They've grown markedly more aggressive. It appears to be hiding in Sector 3 now. Oh, Take we're going to fight him again? The That's the recurring there, monster? The big, scary Nickelodeon cartoon thing? thing? Hit it with your plasma beam. You've got to take it down. Jesus Christ. How did he get out of the thing without her seeing? What the fuck? This is so stupid. I'm saying there's an item in here somewhere. I'm trying to get that before I leave. Hold on. What the hell? I feel like they should really put a wall in the center of the map of this room. Whatever, it's fine. Being in mortal danger together means you can trust people. I love that she's like, she seemed to suggest that Maurice was killed by a fellow soldier. At least that's what I saw in her flashback when she said that. With those creatures crafted into killers running free, the bottle ship had been turned into a nightmare replica of Zebus. And then here came Adam and the others. What? what it, how is it a replica of Zebus? In the sense the that something is happening? To keep so, secret would be revealed. so they sent in an assassin. Someone to wipe out any survivors as well as anyone who learned about okay, the Okay, so project. it's like the evil android Did and you, alien? James. Anthony and Adam. Could one of them really be? Dude, the Lindsay Ellis thing of like Until I found out who knowing was, that a thing happened and not knowing why it was done that way is so applicable here. The deleter, oh no. No. On top of everything, I started to think about that woman. Was she the one who sent the distress signal? And could she be the person in charge here? Madeline Bergman. Either way, I knew I had to protect her. She would be targeted again. And she wasn't the only one in danger. I, too, would be considered a threat here. Fucking stupid Kojima shit. You just hear that in the Japanese, right? Where she says deleter in English.
can Samus stand up to the deleter? Oh, it's a good thing they all have identical costumes. They didn't try to make them stand out from one another earlier. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you this name. I'm almost... You're, you're not gonna get the intensity of reaction that you saw in the first episode, I'm sorry. Like, now I know how stupid it is, so I'm a little bit more prepared. But the deleter is really dumb. It's, it's as dumb as everything else we've run into so far. The thumbs down thing, it's in that same tier. I guess that's maybe the useful... Where, where I was surprised... I knew this game was going to be... I knew the story was going to be bad. As in, like, problematic. I didn't realize it was also going to be dumb. Right? That's where I'm surprised. Bad I can deal with. Dumb and bad. All right, Samus has this weird thing where she's got PTSD and she needs the permission of Adam to do anything. I don't like that. I'm going to complain about it for the same reason I complain about male gaze problems in video games, right? But at least that shit is still not executed in a way that's completely pants on head stupid and embarrassing. I think when I say Metroid... Other M, stop. The real feeling I have is this feeling of like secondhand embarrassment. Like, uh, it's like going to a, um, like an elementary school, um, talent show or something, right? And like feeling bad for the kid. Yeah, it's time for the cat paw. <laughs> or is it Filthy Frank with a giant clock? It's time to stop, okay? No more. I guess they want me to jump at the end of this thing instead. I think that's why I come at it from like, this is embarrassing. If it was Team Ninja, I'd be like, whatever. They don't care about the story. They're just... They're here to ruin it. You know, I'm not surprised. This is kind of what I was expecting. Hearing that it's Sakamoto and it's the word of God from Nintendo is what's so shocking. Like, really? It makes a lot more sense if it's, um... Team Ninja, because this is the kind of quality crap you get from something like Hyrule Warriors, right? What was the core plot of that? It was something like... I keep letting off D-pad instead of two. It was like Sia was attracted to Link and jealous of um, Zelda or something like that. Oof. Why is this suddenly not working? Hold on. There we go. 
So I gotta launch closer to the wall though. Yeah, exactly, right? It's uh it's the Star Wars prequels where it's like, was this what George Lucas wanted to do the whole time and he just didn't have enough money or technical capability? Well thank God, like someone else, namely his wife, made the original trilogy good. Because if he had been able to deliver in his original vision, then this OT would blow. Did it turn out that Metroid was accidentally good all along because of hardware limitations? Hyrule Warriors is a really big one. Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball is another one. Sure that the Ninja Gaiden games are fine. I'm talking about the 3D Ninja Gaiden games, right? Because it was a different team forever ago that made the NES ones. I recommend playing a few hours of Hyrule Warriors is enough to give you an idea. Going straight back up there. No, it's not the Warriors franchise, it's the story in that game, which was their product of them. You could do Dynasty Warriors in a Zelda setting just fine without whatever stupid shit they did in that game. Honestly, I'm not clear on what they want me to do here. Hold on. That's where I came into this, expecting this game to be extremely competent from a gameplay perspective, because if you like Dynasty Warriors games, then Hyrule Warriors is fine from a gameplay perspective. I personally don't like the core gameplay loop at all, but for what it is, it's executed pretty well. Okay, game, what do you want me to do up here? I can't run up this hill here. Looks like that's a one-way drop. There's nowhere further to go up top, as far as I can tell. I might ask for help here in a second. It wants me to go that way. Wait, this is a different platform than the one I was just on? Where where was it geographically? Did I like drop down from higher above that when I fell earlier? This is all just an elaborate energy tank. So this just goes back down there. Let me see if there's anything else here before I go down.
This is a shockingly long optional detour if that room is actually supposed to be optional. Looks like, in fact, it was. Oh, it wasn't optional. I'd really like to have that power. Hey, uh... Adam, can I please use my ability to shoot through walls? Please. Samus, you need a permeating shot. Thank you. I'm authorizing you to unlock your wave beam. Event flags. This game still is not a uh the Metroidvania. The one Wii game with voice commands. The map keeps confusing me because it's oriented differently from the mini-map for whatever reason. The wave beam that can shoot through very specific glass walls that are designed to be shot through by the wave beam. I was gonna say, if it's open now, I swear to God. Really don't want me to backtrack game. Definitely has that Devil May Cry 1 level layout feel to it where it's like you can go back, but why would you? There's nothing back there. Up oh, there, Samus used the forklift to move the boxes. tell me that I had to go down this way, trigger an event flag for the enemies to show up so I could get the stupid plasma or wave beam and now go back the way I just came to be able to make more progress. A class K license for that. They die faster now. Oh no, they don't. Never mind.
This is what I think it's making me do. This has been happening in JRPGs a lot, and it's super frustrating. It's the situation where the only way to progress is to give up on progressing and backtrack and have the game set an event flag based on that, right? Happened in uh, Final Fantasy VIII yesterday or Monday. Happened very frequently in Dragon Quest. I guess this is launching up to a catwalk that looks identical and is slightly to the left of the other catwalk I was in. Yeah. Like, there's no way to know that you're supposed to give up other than to have just tried everything. Be like, well, I guess I can't make progress here. Oh. Leaving what I was is what I was supposed to do all along, apparently. Okay. You get on the train in Final Fantasy VIII and you talk to everybody and nothing happens. You're like, okay, I guess I'll leave the train, even though that makes no sense. You go to leave the train and Selfie and Zell show up. Fucking kidding me. I love how he's watching me on his camera and I get to this door and I can't progress. He's like, oh, whatever, she'll be fine. That is embarrassing. That's so bad. That right there might be one of the worst. There's been a lot of bad examples of the whole Adam unlocks your powers for you thing, but that one feels particularly terrible. Especially since there's nothing interesting about going through that puzzle more than once. First I was like, wow, this is an actually an optional sequence. Shocking. Can't believe there'd be an optional energy tank that's that far out of the way. So far this game, if there's been something optional, it's like inside a bombable wall or something. Or like one room deep max. How would you get this cool scene? I'll tell you how. The way you do it is you just have that avalanche happen the first time you leave this room. Instead of the second time. What? for me to go faster on this or something? Last time I didn't hit anything and it still caught up to me at about the same point. No, I could try that, I guess. I've basically never had to use the morph ball in a creative way before in this game. I can't use it here. What? Oh, that was just a cutscene. I wasn't even charging. Whatever. It's fine. Okay, whatever game.
So I don't know if it's a if it's possible for those of you who haven't played this game to unless if you're watching very attentively to really feel how this game conditions you to play in a certain way for like several screens and then suddenly it's like, oh fuck right, this is a Metroid game. We should have you do something kind of clever. But the game hasn't had you in a state of having to look for things that are clever, right? It's like the opposite of a La Mulana type game, where in La Mulana you, you get to a point where you're always expecting bullshit, or you're always expecting shenanigans. So you're really going crazy about rubbing up against every wall, and sometimes going too far with it even. Games are already out in 2010. These guys have like temporary iframes briefly after they come out of getting missiled. It doesn't feel great. It's like the core loop of a game like Super Metroid or even Metroid Prime is is telling you, hey, bomb every wall, you know, suspect secrets everywhere. This game is conditioning you, there are almost never secrets, except wait, this one's not even a secret. You just have to do something Metroid-like in order to make basic progress. Well, the camera on the saver manages to easily turn you around. <laughs> Gotta turn on the console. Hey, okay, now we're uh, Resident Evil. Oh my god! I am shocked. Shocked. Proc fractions is great. Oh my god. Oh my god! Although actually it was sort of obvious. Yeah. No gear. Look out, Snake! It's interesting that, like, forever ago it was announced that Retro Studios, the, the Texas company, was making Metroid into an FPS. And everyone was like, oh my god, they're changing the genre of Metroid, and it's an American company making it? This is a shit show, it's gonna be terrible. And then they made it, and it was just all Metroidvania. It just happened to be first person. This game, like, there's no reason to expect it wouldn't be a Metroidvania, and it turns out that it's not. There's nothing wrong with that, I mean... Kind of a neat setting. I suppose you could make like a survival horror game in the Metroid world if you wanted to. Or a spectacle brawler or whatever. I don't think it's super honest about it being in a different genre. But the more I play it though, the more that seems to be clear. Incredible. I wonder if every enemy in the game has an attack cycle that's just delayed enough that you should be able to heal. I'd say Bayonetta to see a good version of this. Seriously? 
You're gonna make me do the elevator fight again? I don't think you can release the heal. I mean, you can release it before it's full to cancel it. I don't want to fight that thing again. Or any of these things again. Too many of these. Cool execution animation. Uncharacter uncharacteristically punishing death. Seriously? So I'm supposed to missile the ice, but it doesn't have a lock on. Okay, but why? The game. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you just stutter step next to an enemy, you can infinitely dodge with no penalty. I'm seriously not clear how this is supposed to work. Like, what's the actual intent? Wait for it to do that attack, and then run up and do a cool Devil May Cry execution attack? Oh, I gotta fight that guy again. Okay. I'm excited. I think too, like, if this, I think this name has basically made this point before, but like, if it's gonna be a spectacle brawler, at least let that part be interesting, you know? Drain the tubes. Got it. Yeah, normal Metroid hallway. Those enemies are like the sole exception. Okay, I don't want to backtrack. Because the game has told me I generally don't have to do that. But here I might actually have to.
Yeah, I know, right? Like, you did a good example when you compared it to the uh, falling with the Ridley fight, right? Like, that's more exciting than anything that's happened in any of the boss fights in this game. The one where the Nickelodeon lizard monster is on top of you and you're, like, having to shoot its tail was incredibly lame. <laughs> If you're going to make the game into a bunch of QTE cutscenes, at least have the cutscenes be cool. And get more on the way down. Before I go all the way back down and potentially have to go back on that elevator, does anyone know if I need to do stuff beyond the elevator after having drained those tanks that seem to have no connection to anything else? Yeah, I was talking about the soundtrack earlier. That super bums me out. I like Metroid music. It definitely stands out from other game soundtracks. in the tanks after they're drained in first person. Okay. Seriously? Seriously? What is happening? Let me out of here. I don't want to fight these guys. Oh my god. Stand there for long enough, and she just presses it eventually on her own. Incredible. Renowned melee attacker. Okay, I think I get it. So there is a thing that I couldn't shoot at through the... Whatever, fine. Thank you. make an oh fuck it's a metroid game counter we'd be at like six or seven right now yeah and they're totally fine if the game is conditioning you to look out for that stuff all the time Let me see the outside of the station, right? See something cool. This elevator is bound for Sector 3. Yay, Sector 3. Warning is now in effect in Sector 
Three. Okay. Scan your regularity has been confirmed in the geothermal power plant and the experimental simulated desert area. All staff members are asked to please evacuate immediately. Air yeah, right. be clear, the door in the area where it looks like I'm supposed to go is locked, right? And I did a little camera cutaway thing where it showed me that locked door, right? Is there another way over there? find a console to open the door somewhere? Every time I've started to backtrack, thinking that's what I'm supposed to do, that's been wrong, and I was supposed to go in the place where the objective marker was pointing, so this is probably wrong. But I'm not yet clear how it's wrong. I guess we'll see. Go back up to where the boss fight is, I guess. Or was. This feels wrong though. This doesn't seem to be what the game wants me to do. Really, I can't jump on that. Whatever. You came out of lava, so you can't grab a ledge. This can't be right. There's no way they want me to go this far back. It's not characteristic of this game up to this point. I mean, maybe it connects from the top right corner, but when I loaded in, it like zoomed in on that locked door. Let me check that door that I didn't go in really quick to see if there's anything there. Oh yeah, what, what if it is that stupid... <laughs> the stupid volcano console? Uh, what would be the dumbest thing we can come up with? It's that volcano console and all it does is open the locked door next to the elevator, right? All right, well, I needed the speed boost to cross back through here. 
Even though I didn't need it last time. Oh, I gotta fight this friend again. Can I at least shoot him through his armor because I have the plasma beam now? No, is that not how that works? You suck, dude. I have to get close to you to get you to reveal your weak point. Your centipede. Or wave, whatever. Oh my god, this is totally it. Why couldn't I? Seriously, it doesn't look that deep game, but okay. This game never has backtracking. Remember that one console that you could target, but for some reason it wouldn't turn on earlier? Let's make you go back to that to open a door. What? Are they serious? I feel like that is the worst kind of backtracking, where it's like, the console was only available because we triggered an event flag, and then the console itself is an event flag. A naked one at that. Yep, that's what we had to do. Oh my god. I was like, at least it's gonna be that that console opens a door that we couldn't access way back there, right? Not Anthony! No, he's the one... that is slightly more characterized than the other ones. Hey, you know, uh, authorization to use the grapple beam would be really nice. Samus, the grapple beam is authorized. So fucking stupid. Get to Anthony and cover him. Okay. Yeah, economy of characters, right? We spent slightly more time giving him any kind of quirk at all. How did Anthony get up there? Oh, he's been authorized to use the grapple beam the whole time. It's just Samus that we're punishing. That attack's pretty comical because it has to be a really, really long charge up to give you to make it any in any way reasonable to use the missile against it. Basically I just have to bait that out. I just have to wait for him to do it. I can freeze his top, but then I can't hurt him until he chooses to use the red beam attack. Oh I can jump on his head? Alright, maybe not. That's a little bit less stupid. Oh, I can, but it doesn't do anything. It kicks me off. Okay.
Because the charge beam does nothing to it. But the regular beam does something? What? ugly. Thanks, princess. So, you get called out here, too? Called? Commander called? gave us a new directive to move as a unit. Our gather point was a navigation booth near here, but when no one showed... Imagine her in this cutscene in the same uniform he's in. I got jumped by those things you just saw. What was your unit directive? I'm tracking that monster. EDF, yeah. We're heading to the geothermal power plant to open the magma eruption port. Gotta restore the power in this place, so I can see that pretty face of yours. Yeah, it seemed a little excessive to send the whole unit to do it, but he's the commander. He must have had a reason. We know he's the traitor because he's got the 07 above his head. Also, economy of characters. So, Samus. Has to be Anthony, because it's not Adam. How you feeling about the commander, huh? What the fuck was that? Oh no. What's with the music? Ian has arrived at the drive-in. Ian, be careful out there. I know this is a routine fix, but don't let your guard down. There were 300 people on board. Their lives are in your hands. Roger that. Critical. The unit is overheating beyond our estimates, sir. Ian! Commander Malkovich, unit meltdown imminent. It's going to explode. Prepare to disengage the drive unit immediately. But Ian's still inside. Adam, I can reach him. Give me the order, please. Lock and secure the shielding doors now. Adam, wait! There's still time. I can make it. Please, let me go. I mean, that's Ian. That's your little brother out there. We're out of time, sir. Adam, please, let me go. You have to trust me. Just give me a chance. Commence drive unit disposal immediately. That's an order. Adam was right. If we had waited any longer, it would have meant the end of those we had come to rescue, and the end of us as well. I knew that, but... At the very least, you wouldn't be standing here now. That's what the commander was most scared of. childish no one should have to make the choice that adam did and yet all i could do was question his authority and make things more difficult hey you were just a pup then and the commander knows it look forget it sorry for hitting your nerve we better get going anyhow man if something like that happened now Best just forget about it. I'm out. I knew the question Anthony was suppressing, and I knew the answer. If something like that happened again, I would hold fast to that glimmer of hope and try for redemption. Again, telling us, not showing us a thing. Glad to have given you something to distract you from the pain, Bruce. The mountain to colored visor, right?
Yeah, exactly. What is happening? Like, the response to that sequence of cutscenes is what? And why? Yeah, it just happens suddenly. That's not... That's not a twist. You can't... Where do you even start talking about that, right? This was a lot of my problem with the... The Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's not exactly the same issue, but it's taking something that's like... Something that's important for your being able to follow the entire story and see where they're going with character motivations and, and taking something that should be set up very early and making it a surprise. It's like, no. It's not even in an interesting one either. Apparently, it's his brother. Not Ian. She says not Ian. That means she cares about him. Yeah, right. The exposition monster ate my grapple point. Uh oh. something with that first. No, not that. There might be a switch I have to pull somewhere else. Yeah, I know, right? Same thing, right, where shooting the enemy does nothing. It's building up a secret do button gauge where you can do a QTE that actually hurts the boss. auto-targeted the grapple beam that time.
How do you decide whether to be a grapple beam or a missile beam? Do button. Do that like six or seven more times, right? Is a phase change? Oh, now I can just damage him. Okay. Before shots just triggered cutscenes, but well, they need to use different kinds of health bars, like a like a pressure bar or something. Sekiro bar exactly. Samus doesn't use ladders. Samus, it looks like that monster is headed to the geothermal electric power generator. Track it and put an end to it. Playing fusion after this, I feel like this game is gonna make fusion worse. With the, uh, the Adam AI thing. That's so. At least there's no voice acting. Most Zelda bosses are wait for the boss to do the thing that you can respond to and then hit it until it phases, yeah. It's true. I guess it's that, but sub, hit it until it phases with... Don't bother really hitting it at all. Right, regular hits do nothing. You need to get the... tasty missile cutscene, climb up its arm and shoot it in the head QTE hits. Those are the ones that actually count. Point of that? What the fuck? It's like I love that. 
There are monsters everywhere. They're really recreating Planet Zebus. Like, and that things are happening? What are you talking about? Maybe it's like a shine spark jump thing. It seems unusually fancy for this game. This can't be right, right? This feels super wrong. Can't even move at a diagonal like that with the D-pad. Just wonder, like, why is this room so big? If not for the shine spark. So what the hell is the point of this thing? To rotate this thing so I can get up there, maybe? That's it, okay. That makes sense. Or something. Oh, right, it's Metroid. I feel like they really wasted this holograph, hologram idea. It's a cool concept. Could have done some pretty cool stuff with this, I think. And I really like that earlier hologram puzzle with the crack in the wall. It's just... They set it up so poorly. It wasn't something that you figured out, it was something that just happened. Can I just avoid them? Well, this room's too big to really make me kill all of these things, right? That would just be comical.
these things again. So you can almost spam it and get on the level you want to be on, but I think you're supposed to jump up once and then wait. Motherfucker. God damn it. So is it a is it load bearing enemies or is that there's a switch I have to pull? is just going up to the same spot up in the top, right? Oh, it's a console. Okay. At least I didn't have to kill everything. That's a change of pace. There are too many, like, environmental monsters, the ones that blow up when you're next to them, and I'm like, there's no way they're going to make me kill everything, right? That would be absurd. Now, the funny thing is if they made you uh, use that terminal and then the door was still locked until you killed all the enemies. Definitely another one of those objectives that you're supposed to do on the first try. Feels like overkill. Oh, secrets! It's like a JRPG style secret. Shit, I went left instead of right. One of these is progress. I feel like that's something special about Metroid in particular, even compared to other Metroidvanias, that it's uh, it's often not clear what progress is, unless if you go to like a completely new area that you've never been to before. Right? Something could just as easily be a really long secret path or lead to a necessary progression upgrade, right? Here. This guy again. At some point I'm gonna be able to jump in his head or something. I do not feel conditioned to be able to safely jump on enemies.
This enemy is almost worse than that golden headed uh, ox monster. I think he might be worse. He just like auto dodges charge shots. Seriously, all the way up there. You died off screen. Good thing you didn't have anything you could drop. Yeah, Sympathy the Knight does a pretty good job with it too, I agree. Yeah, if they mix them in with other things, which I'm sure they were trying, it's like, now fight this guy, but here are some things to make it different than the last time you fought it. I think you're right that if this was Devil May Cry or God of War or whatever, like, it would be okay that you're fighting them multiple times, because maybe the XP that you got since you fought it last means you now have a new ability that makes it easier, or at least different. I think Symphony Knight's pretty good. It hasn't aged super well. There's parts where you could definitely get stuck, and I don't think it would be your fault. It's a little rough to play completely blind. But if you don't mind Googling stuff every now and then, it's really, really good. even bother. Sometimes it makes me wonder why I even bring the thunder. Maybe because here I have to. It's just like a, you make a mistake and fall down here and now you climb back up and then you can actually make progress. Fact that looks like that's the case. I thought Blood Seam was pretty good. The grapple beam is almost a cutscene too. Like I think there's only one, maybe two release points. It's not a smooth continuum. It may have worked that way in Metroid Prime as well. It's been a while since I played it. I don't remember. Come on. Okay. Thank you, 3D. This looks exactly like an area I was in a long time ago. Might even be the same area? Just lava e now? Change direction with the grapple. I guess it's that you don't really have to aim the grapple or time it. It's like a it's like a binary thing. It's like you either launch backwards or you launch forward. She's swinging the whole time, but it's not like the 2D games. Oh my god, don't... Why would it turn you around the way you came? Oh yeah, we have definitely have been here before. Now I don't remember. Came here that first time with... Uh... Out the various suit, and it's like, this can't be progress, right? Does anyone know, is I supposed to be able to do something back in that lava area at the bottom? I didn't see any things I could grapple onto or anything new, really. Well. The 
this might be it. Yeah, that time I let off, like, as she was swinging back, and it still launched me the way I was supposed to go. Same there. And there. That time I let off it really early, and it still sent me where I was supposed to go. Ratcheting playing floating grapple pits everywhere. Yeah, I feel like another element of this is that progression feels arbitrary. Oh, cool. That's actually kind of a neat twist. They tried to set this up as a scary thing and now we know something worse than it killed it. And she didn't say anything! Holy shit! Whoa. It just kind of happened and she looked at it and, it and the player was able to reach their own conclusions. And it improved the scene as a result. I wonder if almost all of the energy tanks are on the critical path. Feels like they have been so far. I think these Excel charges and the occasional missile tanks are the only things that feel like they're actually really optional. They're not particularly far from the critical path. It may have been killed. see them do they really count as secrets <laughs> we haven't had a secret that was more than a single screen off the critical path so far oh god fuck it, damn it really more props to another metroid 2 remake for not doing ridley <laughs> Whoever came up with this idea. It's super tense, but you have unlimited time to spot the pixel. I'm kind of confused as to what they were going for with this. It would be one thing if, like, as soon as they were in, the thing was in frame. Really? What? The, the door? Done. Thank good. Well, only one thing to do, huh? Let's tear this thing up. Wait, Anthony. Leave this one to me. Don't waste your plasma. Waste your plasma. Well, 
the circular boss arena. Samus, blast the eruption port to get the magma flowing. What? The eruption port? Oh, I have to be in first person view now. At least Ridley can't hurt me, apparently. Use your super missiles. Thank you. Okay, press and hold A and release when fully charged. I was gonna say, are super missiles also completely context sensitive that it just launches them whenever you need them? This is the thing someone spoiled for me in Discord that really killed her parents or something. Which is incredibly dumb. What's your status? He's Samus, do you read me? Really? Why is she good to fight now? What changed? Okay, there's at least playing release theme. Derpy look yeah, it really looks like a cartoon character. Again, just like start the fight with Ridley when Ridley shows up. Anthony's not in the room. I'm like, oh, it's Ridley. His head's too small for his buff muscles. Oh, he's got a butt stomp. Classic. You're immune to my blast now for some reason? Why? Hmm. 
Yeah, this actually feels like a real fight so far, I was gonna say. Like I'm actually doing damage with my regular attacks, not just the QTE missile shots. And yeah, mechanically, this fight's fine. It's actually... I wish every other boss fight in the game was more like this one. It's got a good number of phase changes, a decent number of different attacks. Really? Yeah, right. Again, if this is her first encounter with Ridley, reimagine the game as her green rookie adventure. Even if he wanted to be like that he killed her parents, maybe she freaks out the first time she sees him. But I felt like even like the little flashback thing, showing her as a little girl was really indelicate. And tell not showy. Shot that time? That's a cool attack. Just to point out that just because I was able to quickly swap to uh, from first person to third person view there doesn't mean that I should have had to, if that makes sense. I'm not clear on what causes a super missile to charge versus a first person charge shot. God damn it. to heal here, but nope, I'm dead. I like how you're already dead there, so it just shows you that animation. <laughs> you can't shoot anymore. My issue with this fight right now is I'm not clear the super missiles work in the phase where he's only damageable by super missiles. It seems like half the time I put a charge up the super missiles and uh, just do a regular charge shot. I guess it's because I don't have a dedicated button for it.
instant phase transition that time. Oh dear. I'll just do that every time if possible. I think it is context sensitive. Almost dead. Incredible. It's okay, I'm gonna die here. I don't know if he ever has a period in his attack cycle where he's slow enough that it's possible to heal once you get low. I got the missile refill out of the way. I think I missed the phase transition there again. There we go, at least that time landed. First try. Yeah, I don't know if there's a tell for the tail swipe. It was a little frustrating because a couple of the attacks and the super missile not working. But, uh, it was actually kind of a cool fight. I don't think wings work that way, Ridley. I wondered if Anthony was conscious as he hit bottom. Unbearable thoughts welled up in me, making me want to get as far away as I could. When he hit bottom? I regretted not being able to protect him. And I regretted thinking, even for a moment, that he would betray me. 
or fail to come to my aid at the expense of his own safety. If that Ridley fight was the same, except you had a nunchuck so that there was just a different button you could press to shoot super missiles, then that would have been a really, really cool boss fight, and I wish that the game had more of that. Had exciting music, which was nice. And it doesn't have to be the Metroid music we've already heard. In fact, I'd rather not hear more of the same in most cases. I'd rather not have more Ridley if we can avoid it. But, uh... At least music that's not boring is nice when you can get it. Yeah, right. I love how as soon as Anthony died, she reverted to whatever, I'm just going to fight him and kill him, right? Like, if what they were trying to do is imply that Samus is too scared of Ridley to fight him, I think that's dumb, but if you're going to do it, I almost would have respected them more if they just had you control Anthony for that fight. <laughs> Instead of just her freezing up for two seconds and then just turning back into an action hero again. I still would have had problems with the timing on that if they we're really going to disable her. They're like, okay, this is Ridley fight number seven or whatever. And seriously, this is an issue still. This is an issue now and has never been an issue before. Oh, it actually was an issue. We just didn't show you that in those games. I feel like part of what you'd have to do to earn the story they're trying to tell in this game, if you really don't want to do it as a soft reboot and a prequel, the next best thing I think you can do is to do remakes of your prior games, you know? When you do Zero Mission, if this is your plan all along, then in Zero Mission, make sure you plant some of this stuff. See if I can get what that item is really quick. Oh no, it's Ridley. What do I do? Oh, dies in space explosion. So this reminds me in a lot of ways of um, what happened with the DC Universe movies. That's I've been searching for that example this whole time. It just occurred to me that like DC saw what. Marvel had done with the Avengers movies and they were just like we want to do that and we want to do it right now So let's let's jump right into Batman vs. Superman without any setup And I was like no you, you can't do that like you it worked for Marvel because they spent 10 years uh, Meticulously setting all of this stuff up You can have this thing, and this could even be cool, but you, you can't just, like, get it... You can't start from a sprint, right? Wow, an actual secret energy part. Piece of heart. Something was gnawing at me. Communication with Adam had ceased. From the deleter's point of view, Adam would represent the largest threat. Without question, I know, his right? had to be in danger. Nothing feels good. I guess the Excel things that make you charge faster feel okay? He wouldn't go down easily. And Adam would already know about the deleter. So there's no way he would let his guard down. Adam has to be the deleter? If that was the case, she still had fond memories of him and why fusion. Why couldn't I reach him? What did he think of the unfolding situation? 
and what was he planning to do next? My racing thoughts started to frustrate me. Me too, Samus. The deleter. The baby is the deleter. Go. She's gonna go up to the deleter and give him a thumbs up to indicate her dissatisfaction. <laughs> I need to use more equipment and I can't reach him. What am I going to do? Dude, if this... This game isn't good enough to, like, use that as a story point where she breaks his, uh... This elevator is bound for second his request, point. right? I mean, if they... At this point, that's the obvious thing to do if that's their whole setup with... She's choosing when and when not to use power-ups. Like, especially with him focusing on the power bomb. That's felt like a huge plant. For her to explicitly disobey him so if it does do that i'm not going to give it lots of credit because that's what it should be doing that's what it's set up but i'm expecting it's not even going to do that right gain the courage to disobey samus I guess it is kind of cool that because I'm not hearing from Adam, I don't have an objective marker anymore, and it's neat. Has the opportunity to make one small step back in the direction of averageness. That's a good way to put it, yeah. Like, even that would have been cool if the game was framed differently. Again, imagine the script doctor. This is a far back prequel. Samus is a green rookie in the Federation. This is how she gets her power suit story, where the whole authorization to use weapons things culminates in her learning to disobey and learning to go her own way and do the whole solo bounty hunter thing that we know her from in the other games, right? That would be kind of cool. Here, if she ends up disobeying him as part of the story, it it's, doesn't feel cool. It's like, oh, I guess they made him the bad guy. Whatever. It's not like a character growth moment for her. Oh, I guess she valued saving him more than her own life when she was burning to death in the lava zone. But I get it from Nintendo. Samus Returns for the 3DS wasn't bad. I think they turned, learned some lessons from that. Yeah, I know we're definitely using power bombs. I'm not denying that that's going to be a thing, but... Just the question is, do we end up using power bombs because he relents and lets her do it? Or does she explicitly ignore his orders? Because I would say it's like... Borderline correct for her to ignore the orders at this point. It's not character growth, it's like a character wiggling a toe after being paralyzed in a horrific accident. Yeah. There's a way to have done it where it was character growth though, right? If the game was all about like, she's in the military and she has to follow orders and this is the life she lives, that maybe she's like a really, because they, they try to set this up with the whole, Samus doesn't give the thumbs up because she's like disobedient or defiant or whatever. If they had that be the thing where she keeps wanting to be defiant or she keeps trying to give her feedback and Adam and others are ignoring it. Why don't we do this? No. And she keeps following orders and finally she gives in and learns not to do that. I was like, it can't be the most obvious thing to scan, right? It never is. Any objections? 
potions, Adam? Mm -hmm. Does it count as her disobeying him when he's not there to authorize it? Mediocrity reached. That could have been way cooler. Take what you can get. Honestly, her line there, any objections, Adam, was like the most character she's had in the whole game. <laughs> Probably stop at this save point, but I'll go one more room for it. Again, five more minutes here. I have a another meeting with my HOA and Comcast tonight, so. Snarky tone doesn't really match with the situation. I'm not a member of the Galactic Federation. I came here because I intercepted the distress call. I'm a bounty hunter. And I know that something is after you. Please. Would you like to give me a bounty for it so I have a motivation to be here? <laughs> Easy. I'm Samus Aaron. What's your name? Take a visa. Madeline Bergman. Behind that was like a Silent Hill cutscene. Federation was trying to create a special forces unit composed of bioweapons. It is like fucking Resident Evil. In order to make it happen. <laughs> They were attempting to create an organization modeled after the space pirates. Oh god, it's the exposition dump cutscene, isn't it? At the center. But because of a certain presence, the life forms became ferocious. We were no longer able to control them. By a certain presence, she must have meant Ridley. Ridley is the Wesker of Metroid. Even though it endangered too much life, of him, he never fucking dies. I had to. I felt there was a real danger here, that if left as is, the Zabesians would continue to evolve and resurrect as real space pirates. What? If that danger was real, then the risk of withholding information to protect herself was too great, clearly. And yet... Wasn't she the one who set the facility's system to self-destruct? In silence, we gotta I fight Scorpion Ridley. Sense of responsibility. I guess Ridley's already a time, dragon, so for him to become scary, he's gotta turn into a holes. like fishy man, right? Say that the Zabesians, under Ridley's influence, became super aggressive. Would that really lead to the resurrection of the space pirates? Without a malicious force what? to lead them down that path. Wouldn't they continue I'm sorry, to what's the difference between a Zebesian and a space pirate? Becoming no more than a swarm of feral creatures? Regardless, 
It was clear that the Galactic Federation was ready to consign their enormous mistake to oblivion. And that's why they sent a deleter. Yeah, I was already under the impression that, that the space pirates, pirates were hostile but wait, aliens on Zebus, but then they called what looked like space pirates story. earlier Zebesian, and I'm like, oh, are they supposed to be Zebesian neighbors the whole time? At all, with just a small flexing of the Galactic Federation's military force, That's why there's all that Chozo stuff there. Able to destroy a facility of this scope with ease. So why do Music, they? calm down. Actually, Ridley punches the boulder at you. <laughs> there was an even more dangerous plan. Come with me. Ridley, like, molts his dragon armor and shows off that he's like a, a bishy anime teenager with purple hair. What? Space pirates are not intelligent native Zebesians controlled That's by Mother possible. Brain. The Metroids were terminated along with Zebus. Yes. And the last of them. The baby. The baby! End above my head. You're Samus Aaron, right? The one who annihilated the space pirates? I'm talking about they're gonna become full blown Metroid space pirates. Like, what? You mean like pirates but in space? They were reproduced from a piece of cell structure salvaged by the Federation, and they are in this facility. This is so stupid. I gave your suit of polish so you'd be at least somewhat presentable. And Ridley in the same way. At first, no one thought that the creature was Ridley. They didn't think it had potential as a bioweapon at all. Uh, they raised it like a pet, calling it Little Birdie. Until one day, uh, it attacked one of the researchers and got away. Ridley had played dead and lured the scientists. Jesus, into his cage. that's so. What was left? Dumb. It was a horrible sight. He's like gremlins. Metroids, don't get him wet. You need Mother Brain's telepathy. Don't feed him after midnight. You don't. You didn't recreate a Mother Brain clone, did you? That's at least less dumb than bishy purple-haired human Ridley. AI program that would reproduce Mother Brain's thought processes. I thought Mother Brain was just one of the brain computers from Metroid Prime. MB. Oh my god. But it was just a program. Alright, so you got it the deleter the MB himself. and the thumbs down thing. MB evolved as it communicated with the Metroids. Did it Kojima write this? Self -aware. MB. Much like the original Mother Brain. MB this. <laughs> it's really quite remarkable. That's when it became clear to me just why Madeline was so afraid of the Space Pirates' resurrection. It wasn't that her story had holes Dude, the phrase Space Pirate Resurrection is so weird sounding. Like, right what? Before her eyes. If everything she said was is this true, just a localization thing? Where are the Metroids and MB? They're in an area called Sector Zero. It's a unit that doesn't appear in any of our map data. It's a place like Torian, where we propagate and raise Metroids. I began to see what the worst case scenario would be. Game is the Resident Evil and the Metroid would be mass produced and Devil May Cry. As AI that could control them was developed. Just as dumb as those games. The special forces unit modeled after the space pirates was replaced. What? As the AI called MB spun out of control, the facility became a place much like the planet Zebus. Just cut all this shit. It's nothing like Zebus. If the situation were left it's alone, like Zebes in the sense the that things happen here. Would be put in peril. Even the ringleaders of the operation wanted to avoid that, but they still wanted the Metroids. Completely dour way. about it, yeah. They decided to capture the Metroids contained right. in Sector Right, it's Zero like and delete the rest Resident of the Evil city, knows that it's camp, including the space pirates. I don't think this knows that it's it's and schlock, right? But before the ringleaders could act, Adam appeared. Adam might have known or suspected the truth about the facility from the beginning. 
Regardless, since the ringleaders were members of the Galactic Federation, they could no longer act recklessly. This is so convoluted. Was installed as a member of Adam's team to destroy evidence and plan each subsequent move. But having no me added on as a member must have disrupted the Galactic Federation's plans. Madeline, thanks for telling me all this. I've got to destroy the Metroids and MB in Sector Zero. You have to remain hidden. Ravanon linked me to someone who has actually hacked this game to remove a lot of the cutscenes and change some of the mechanics. There's some details about it Don't in Discord. Worry. The Galactic Federation CO, who's here now, will help you. You're safe. Does that CO happen to be Commander Adam Malkovich? He's the deleter. What? Oh my god. Oh, so like uh the real leader of this operation. Right in and Middle Gear Solid 2. I can't believe that he's here. Stay here until I return. So this isn't the same as that we know? So, okay, I guess that takes me back to that. We don't think that that's true. It's fan theory, but suppose it is true. That takes me back to what I was saying earlier about like the Final Fantasy VII remake. Like if something is something, it's fundamental to your setting, it's something you need to tell us right away and not something you should reserve as a twist. It's kind of like if, uh, it's like if Metal Gear Solid 2 had progressed in exactly the same way, except Raiden wore a mask the whole time and was called Solid Snake for the entire game until you got to GW. And then it was revealed that actually he was this guy Raiden the whole time. You'd be like, what? It's important that you find that out like almost immediately in MGS2. She just got deleted. Bell teated. Del Taco. All right, I gotta get to a save point. About as true as indoctrination. Okay, so not. It's a it's a fan coping method mechanism, right? It's a Homestar Runner reference. We should do those Homestar uh, watch parties before Adobe Flash gets taken down forever. I think someone out there is trying to preserve them, but. It's a bummer because on Flash they had all those cool little Easter eggs that you can click things on the screen. They tried to reproduce those with annotations on YouTube, but then YouTube got rid of annotations. Alright, thanks folks. That's it for today for Metroid Other M. This is a video game. The shock is worn off and now it's just mostly dull. <laughs> and still stupid, but mostly dull. And I think that we could probably say at 7 out of 11 hours that it is not a Metroidvania. It is a spectacle, spectacle brawler. It is much more in common with Devil May Cry than it has in common with other games in the Metroidvania genre.